Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Solve Every Hereditary Disorder Case for All Types of Genetic Variation. I am Kaylee Bach of Labberts, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labroots and brought to you by Kyogen. To learn more, visit kyogen.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Georgios Stemoulis, PhD, Molecular Geneticist, Digital Insights Director of Global Product Management for Hereditary Diseases. Dr. Stemoulis, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Georgios Stemoulis. Uh, I'm the Director of Global Product Management for Hereditary Diseases in uh, Kajan Digital Insights. I'm extremely happy to be here today with you. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, everyone for registering and uh, attending our webinar. Today, uh, I'll try to give you uh, a good uh, overview of how someone can solve every hereditary disorder case for deep preferring types of genetic variation, including CNVs, by using uh, QCI interpret platform. Here is our agenda of our talk today. And I will start with a quick introduction on the current landscape of hereditary disease testing. Uh, as uh, the father of medicine, uh, Hippocrates, uh, had the theory of four humors, uh, uh, like the black bile, the yellow bile, black and phlegm, uh, which were detrimental in order to assess the health or disease status of an individual. Nowadays, we have the four nucleotides, which determine our health or disease status. And it's extremely important to make sure that we can decode any uh, genetic variation uh, in our genetic code with uh, proper, uh, accurate, and very fast interpretation workflow in order to give answers to complex hereditary disorder cases. The impact of hereditary disorders, as uh, you may know already, is uh, very big uh, globally. Uh, more than 7 million infants are born each year with a serious birth defect, and approximately 30% 30 of all infant deaths are due to genetic disorders with more than 7,000 uh, genetic diseases uh, being known uh, and uh, which, are, which have uh, individually uh, recognized. So uh, the impact is huge and uh, there is a big need of proper solutions, proper workflows in order for someone to properly uh, identify the genetic variation but then also to assess the impact of the genetic variation on the phenotype of uh, each case. Here in this uh, uh, slide, we can see the hereditary testing uh, field and, and, and its evolution uh, with the evolution of the technology, of course. Uh, at the start of 2000, uh, we had uh, the approach of single gene uh, testing. Then uh, there was a trend towards multi-gene hotspot uh, panel uh, testing. Then uh, the multi-gene action panel with NGS uh, was broadly adopted. Nowadays, we see more and more whole exons and whole genomes uh, being sequenced and uh, starting to become the new trend for hereditary disease testing. And uh, of course, more verticals of uh, data will come soon and will be combined uh, in order to properly and more accurately assess each clinical case by taking into account different parameters, different measurements from uh, different data sets. This progression of technology is extremely important and very helpful for the hereditary disease testing, but also for the patients and their families since more patients and more families can get answers to their uh, genomic riddle, if you want. However, this uh, expansion of technology, this progression of technology comes also, apart from uh, big findings that we have and big progression, we have also big challenges 
that we have to face in order to uh, accurately and uh, properly assess different clinical cases. In this slide, you can see that with the rise of next generation uh, era, we have also uh, the expansion of new findings and the gene to phenotype relationships uh, that have been extremely uh, big over the years, especially when NGS arised. Uh, and you can see also indicatively at the left uh, bottom part of the slide that uh, last week uh, in OMIM, we had uh, approximately 7,200 phenotypes for which the molecular basis is known at the moment. And the total number of genes with phenotype causing mutations is more than 4,500 genes at the moment. There is also a, a big uh, uh, need, but also a very good progression every day uh, in genomic research. And we know that approximately every day, one new gene uh, is identified and is, is associated with uh, different her hereditary disorder phenotypes. And it is estimated that the number of genes which are involved in the hereditary space is around 9,000 uh, genes. So with over 25,000 variants in a whole exome setting, and more than 3 million variants, which someone can observe in a whole genome setting, the question that arises is how can someone confidently, but also quickly and accurately analyze and interpret variants from uh, an NGS test, such as whole exome or whole genome? This is the big question that uh, everyone uh, tries to answer and to uh, make sure that uh, have the proper tools in hand in order to provide patients with accurate and reliable diagnosis of hereditary disorders. The three key challenges that uh, clinical labs uh, are facing, which are conducting NGS testing, and especially I would say large panel NGS testing for hereditary disorders, is first of all, the fast interpretation. Everyone wants to have a fast interpretation because this results in faster around time and uh, of course, this is for the benefit of the family and the patient. Uh, and as uh, we know, uh, the interpretation workflow is, a, is challenging when it comes to large gene panels and whole exome and whole genome because the amount of data that someone has to assess is huge. There are many variants there uh, and someone needs to have all the proper tools with the, all the right evidences in order to properly assess the different genomic variations that uh, uh, occur after a whole exome or a whole genome run. Moreover, uh, another challenge is that uh, someone should make sure that they have uh, proper annotation tools and solutions uh, which uh, are detrimental for an accurate uh, interpretation uh, workflow at the end. But uh, in order someone this uh, uh, to, to, in order a lab uh, to develop such uh, a solution is very costly, but also it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. So someone needs to make sure that they are uh, addressing this need by a proper uh, provider uh, with uh, an accurate and uh, reliable tool. Most importantly, uh, it's extremely extremely important, I think, to mention here uh, that one of the biggest challenges in her the hereditary space, and especially speaking about whole exome and whole genome testing, is uh, all the knowledge and the evidences that someone should take into account in order to properly assess a variant. And uh, not only to take into account the knowledge that exists out there, but to make sure that this knowledge is the most up-to-date evidences that uh, someone is using. So the challenge here is to stay current with the everyday uh, advancements of uh, uh, the scientific uh, field. So as I mentioned, uh, there are different challenges that the fact that we all agree is that indeed there is a trend towards large panel approaches uh, with a transition to whole exome and whole genome. The challenges, apart from those three that I mentioned before, 
is the fact that we have a huge amount of data and variants, thousands to millions to be assessed, uh, is the need of a flexible, but also scalable interpretation workflow, uh, as flexible uh, that can be used by different individuals in the lab, the director of the lab, but also the variant scientists, uh, flexible in terms that a, a workflow that can be integrated in a lean system, for example, uh, but also uh, uh, another challenge that someone may uh, face is uh, the interpretation time, as I mentioned before, which is critical for a fast turnaround time. Of course, uh, bigger panels means bigger interpretation effort, and uh, there is an increased demand for new evidences for this accurate interpretation. The, in order someone to keep up with the most recent bibliography and latest evidences, should make sure that they have the most reliable tool in hands and the proper training for that. Uh, and of course, uh, last but not least, uh, someone should uh, mention that uh, when we have to deal with uh, hereditary disorders, we all know that there is many times high genetic and phenotypic heterogeneity for specific groups of diseases and is uh, also another layer of difficulty there in order to properly assess and interpret the variants. In these cases, is of detrimental importance the evidence that someone is taking into account uh, in order to properly uh, interpret uh, the genomic data. Uh, the CNVs as well is one of the biggest challenges on, on this field uh, regarding, first of all, the, the detection of CNVs and on a second step, as soon as someone has detected CNVs, the proper interpretation of CNVs with the proper evidences, but also proper guidelines, which are specific for CNVs analysis. I will move now uh, to an introduction of our uh, Kaijin Digital Insights at Kaijin uh, clinical insights interpret platform for uh, uh, for the rest of my presentation when i uh, when i speak about qci interpret i'm referring to Kajian clinical insights interpret i will first try to give you a brief overview of uh, Kajian digital insights uh, our team consists of uh, hundreds of scientists and engineers but also other specialties who work daily to keep uh, on top of uh, the new clinical literature and to provide products that uh, help tra translate uh, genomic data into clinical insights or actionable insights. Kaijin uh, Digital Insights provides a variety of products in different areas from academic research uh, on human samples all the way to clinical laboratory testing. And one of uh, the fundamental and core things we do is to curate these evidences from the scientific literature and to keep it up to date for you so you can uh, get a constant current view of what's known to be clinically relevant and of course gain insights into your data and clinical results. Kaijin uh, Digital Insights is serving uh, more than 90,000 customers worldwide and our clinical decision support tools have been cited in over 35,000 publications. The particular product uh, I will talk about today, uh, Kajian Clinical Insight Interpret, QCI Interpret, uh, for which we will show how it can enable a reliable, fast and accurate interpretation of whole exome, whole genome, has been used to interpret over 2.5 million patient samples to date. This uh, knowledge base uh, is uh, our core, the Kaijin knowledge base is our foundation. Uh, and is uh, something that we are very proud of for uh, ensuring an accurate and a proper interpretation workflow to our uh, customers. This knowledge base, as I mentioned, is fundamental and core to our products for uh, a reliable and fast interpretation process. And I would like to touch a little bit here on our curation process. Our curation is uh, sort of uh, like a factory-like process in high scale. We have hundreds of PhD scientists working on the curation systematically through curation protocols and processes that are rigorously, rigorously tested and defined. And uh, that provides very high quality uh, computable evidences, which then 
can be used uh, to put the data that uh, you are getting from your NGS runs into context of what's currently known about uh, the variants and the mutations detected. Uh, the evidences are curated from a variety of different sources, such as uh, scientific li literature, uh, but also we create uh, medical guidelines and practice guidelines, drug labels, clinical trials, as well as, as, well as molecular data sets uh, with population-wide data sets regarding genomic variation and potet potential pathogenicity of the variants. So uh, a, a wide variety of uh, different content sources that are clinically relevant is uh, curated daily, and that is done uh, through uh, a distributed uh, workforce of scientists who are trained on the various protocols we use and uh, read the literature or review uh, or other uh, resources and integrate it into what we call the Kaijin knowledge base. This then enables our various applications, including QCI Interpret, to compute and combine all this relevant information related to the variant of your interest and put it into biological context for you. So over the past uh, 20 years, uh, we have curated uh, more than 20 million findings in order to ensure that geneticists, but also scientists across the globe are using the most up-to-date information so they can provide accurate, reliable, and fast interpretation of genomic variants to their patients affected by hereditary genetic disorders, as well as uh, somatic cancer. Here, I would like to give you just a small flavor regarding the content and so an example of a variant in this gene. We can see that all the curated info related to the variant is uh, fully and transparently tied back to the source uh, from which uh, this uh, uh, curated. In this case, this is uh, an example, what we call uh, variant findings from this particular article where you could uh, know very transparently, uh, the various details in terms of whether the mutation is, a, is germline or has a germline uh, context uh, in the article, or if uh, there is a disease association uh, with the gene, the population that has been observed this mutation, if it's a, a childhood population or adult population, and a, a different variety, wide variety of details that when they are present or captured uh, in our uh, generation process of these evidences enable us to map, for example, uh, this finding, if it appears in a sample in your run, uh, and uh, through a Kyogen uh, clinical in science interpret to be matched to all the different evidences and uh, be used uh, for you, from you, excuse me, uh, for your uh, uh, report uh, needs. So Kyogen Clinical Insight Interpret is a clinical decision support software which accelerates variant interpretation and reporting of hereditary and just tests at scale. Can leverages on Kyogen knowledge base in order to deliver variant specific, but also scientific evidences in context of phenotype uh, or the diagnosis. Uh, there are numerous uh, filtering uh, approaches that someone can use very user-friendly uh, uh, interface uh, someone can use, but also uh, through API, uh, someone can submit their VCF uh, data, which I will show to you in a bit, and transparently compute the different uh, classifications for the variants. And, and of course, uh, last but not least, it generates evidence-based reports with uh, full transparency on these evidences, which are manually uh, curated from our uh, scientists. QCI Interpret is a platform uh, which can be used for any hereditary application you may be using. Starting from targeted gene panels, panels for inherited or rare disorders, hereditary cancer, carrier screening, up to whole exome and whole genome, but also someone can uh, make sure that uh, they can do single sample analysis, but also familial variant analysis with uh, uploading multiple uh, samples in the platform, if this is uh, under the needs of the user. Let's see a bit the typical process and workflow. Uh, QCI Interpret 
offers a flexible and scalable uh, evidence-based interpretation platform. As I mentioned before, whether you use a Kyogen panel or any uh, vendor's chemistry, uh, QCI interprets supports all of them uh, agnostically. Uh, the same also happens regarding the secondary analysis part. Uh, Kaijen Digital Insights offer a product for secondary analysis called CLC Genomics uh, Workbench, which has a very nice integration with QCI Interpret, uh, but also uh, can, and which can work, of course, for any uh, exome or genome panel. But in case you are using any other secondary analysis, uh, QCI Interpret uh, uh, is very agnostic and will enable uh, for you all uh, the workflow from the start to the end. Um, then uh, regarding uh, the, the, the part of QCI interpret per se, which is the tertiary analysis part, uh, I, as you can see, someone can upload the, the, the data in a, in a format of VCF in the UI, uh, in a very user-friendly UI or through API. Uh, and uh, then uh, someone can, do, can follow the, the different uh, filtration strategies uh, and of course, the classification, uh, the classification of different variants, different types of variation, including CNVs, and then to assess uh, accurately uh, the pathogenicity of different variants, to interpret them properly, and finally to create uh, a report uh, in different formats. Uh, again, even in UI or through API. So let's see briefly what exactly is Kaijen Clinical Insights Interpret. As mentioned, is a web-delivered application where you can upload your patient data along with uh, the metadata for each case uh, on, on our UI, on this very user-friendly interface or through APIs. And uh, QCI Interpret lets you investigate uh, in depth each mutation in the context of the current most up-to-date evidences that Kaijen has curated for you. And uh, through computational uh, means, uh, we are putting those uh, mutations into clinical context for the most informed variant interpretation workflow for you and your patients. This is uh, why we refer to QCI Interpret as evidence-based clinical decision support software, which assists you in the classification and reporting of different mutations, independent of uh, which next generation sequencing platform you use or which secondary analysis platform or tool you are using. Um, then uh, we are providing uh, comprehensive uh, annotation and literature uh, resources. So it displays uh, the information about the variation in terms of its relevance in different hereditary related conditions, clinical uh, cases reported, and all the relevant literature available for each single variant, which uh, has been manually and thoroughly curated by more than 250 scientists daily, but is also augmented uh, and powered by the augmented molecular intelligence uh, approach that we are using. It's very fast and automated. So we apply uh, the ACMG guidelines in an automatic way uh, to give you a, a draft report from which then you can review and refine if you see fit uh, to get your final report in a streamlined way. And all those evidences are curated uh, and are available uh, to you and automatically matched with the mutations you detect so they can be included on your report. We also provide uh, customized uh, reporting uh, solutions as part of QCI Interpret. Uh, many of our customers uh, use uh, QCI Interpret to generate their final signed reports uh, after customizing the, the reports. Uh, there is an integrated also mechanism so you, you can identify which reports are ready for sign out which uh, reports uh, are under review uh, stage uh, and uh, do the uh, electronic signature uh, and uh, as i mentioned we provide uh, a wide variety of customizations in the report uh, so you can have essentially the report uh, look any way you like uh, and we can help you uh, put the relevant content automatically into the report template for your uh, uh, test product. So what we provide uh, with our uh, curated evidences is all the necessary and most up-to-date information for assessing the clinical significance of variants. 
uh, we assess uh, the clinical significance of uh, variation in the germline context using the ACMG guidelines, uh, which uh, puts uh, every variant in uh, a category from benign to pathogenic. And for somatic cancer variants, we also have the actionability aspect, which uh, provides the Turing uh, system for specific mutations and different uh, uh, tumor types. So you could know how actionable uh, is for patient in terms of treatment or prognostic significance. So again, uh, all this information uh, we constantly curate on a daily basis and the knowledge base uh, powers the ability for us to apply algorithms uh, which uh, use these guidelines as frameworks to automatically uh, provide an up-to-date computed classification in uh, both uh, uh, in both categories of diseases like germline or uh, somatic for your variant detected uh, in, in your samples. Uh, and uh, of course, very quickly to identify which may be relevant for your uh, reporting purposes. Um, I would like also to mention something very important regarding QCI interpret, which is the, the process of uh, CNV interpretation. We now have uh, content, uh, very enhanced content for uh, proper and accurate CNV interpretation based on uh, uh, the ACMG uh, CNV guidelines with computed pathogen pathogenicity uh, classification. Uh, more than uh, 60,000 uh, uh, AGMD uh, and Kyogen curated uh, CNV literature references are available for uh, CNV uh, classification and interpretation. But also we provide links to external CNV databases and NOMAD uh, CNV's frequencies uh, in order uh, someone to, to, to check the similarity of uh, a CNV event uh, across uh, what is already known and with uh, previously uh, reported the CNV pathogenic or benign cases. I will show you uh, in a bit uh, one of these examples in our platform. So with this now, I will uh, jump to, to the last part and uh, I think uh, the most interesting part of uh, our uh, webinar, which is uh, the different clinical cases that we will try to see together in uh, QCI Interpret platform. The different cases that we will see today, first will be a CNV case uh, solved uh, by taking into account evidences linked to the phenotype driven ranking feature and the clinical validity. A compounded heterozygous case in a whole genome sequencing, which uh, was solved extremely easily uh, by just adding few phenotypes there. And in a few clicks, someone can get the phenotype and report directly uh, uh, the, the mutations uh, found. And uh, at the end, I will show you, i would give you a quick overview on the capabilities of carrier screening and tree analysis as well. Uh, with QCI interpret, something that you should keep in mind is that someone can ensure that they have a fast, accurate, reliable interpretation for hereditary disorders without the need of spending hours in terms of huge uh, data sets. Because with, uh, within a matter of, of a few minutes, with few clicks, someone can properly identify and spot the relative variance for uh, the case under investigation. So let's move now to uh, the clinical cases. So let's see uh, here oh, the first uh, case. In this uh, screen now, you can see the user interface of Kajin Clinical Insight uh, Interpret uh, platform. On the upper part, uh, you can see some uh, evidences for uh, the variant that uh, is selected. Different details such as the position of the variant, the, the effect on the protein level, population frequencies, the genotype, the impact, but also very importantly, the ACNG classification of the variant. On the lower part of the screen, we have the list of variants uh, which someone uh, can investigate in different approaches. Uh, Someone can add different filters. For example, here we have a whole genome run 
which as you can see started from more than 3.5 million variants. And by applying different filters, for example, in confidence of the variant, the frequency, but also the uh, prediction of deleteriousness of a variant, but also uh, different other filters that someone can add, such as uh, the genetic uh, analysis, like uh, if this is shown in uh, homozygous or heterozygous uh, uh, variants, uh, or if someone can add uh, biological context filters, some others may would like to add uh, filters, for example, in the, in the deleteriousness of the variant, uh, uh, which have to do with uh, the position of the variant, if it's uh, close to uh, an exon or in an intron, uh, associated uh, with gain or loss of function and different other filters. Uh, one approach is by editing this uh, filtered, uh, filtering cascade here, but also you have the option on the right where uh, someone can see different other filters that can be applied. And these have to do uh, also with how you can visualize your variants in this variant table. This is the first page of uh, our platform. The, the platform consists of basically three pages. This is the variant list page. Uh, we have the variant details page and the review and report page, which I will show you very briefly. So here, on this case, we have uh, an individual, uh, a girl, that uh, is affected by uh, potentially a genetic disorder. And there are uh, some clinical symptoms that uh, the geneticist and pediatrician have observed, and they have uh, ordered a whole genome analysis for this uh, girl. Uh, the, the phenotypes that they observed were related to uh, disease of retina and hearing loss. So, uh, as I mentioned before, in Kaijen uh, uh, Clinical Insights Interpret, someone can very efficiently uh, give as an input the VCF file, of course, that we are already did here, and then to get as input different uh, evidences regarding the phenotype. So here, someone can add different phenotypes, such as disease of retina, for example, and also the hearing loss uh, that has been observed in this uh, little girl. And if we apply that, then it is calculating, it is taking into account these uh, pathogenic uh, symptoms, if you want. And then we, if we yeah, get uh, the result, we see that uh, this list has been minimized to uh, very few uh, of these uh, variants compared to the thousands of variants that we had before in the list. So uh, we see that the patient symptoms is the disease of retina and hearing loss. And uh, we have now a list of variants with two of them seem to be uh, pathogenic and likely pathogenic in USH2A gene, uh, re re which is related to Usher syndrome type 2A. Uh, we see that for uh, this variant, I'm gonna click here, uh, the, the computed classification here uh, is pathogenic. Let me go back to the variant. The computed classification uh, is pathogenic. And if I click uh, here, I can see all the different evidences uh, which are triggering the different criteria, which is extremely useful for someone to understand exactly uh, more details about the, the variant. Uh, moreover, uh, I see another variant which is predicted as uh, likely be, uh, pathogenic, which is this variant. Uh, and uh, we see here again the different uh, pathogenicity uh, uh, criteria that are uh, triggered. Here, very importantly, someone should know that we speak about a CNV. So it seems that we can have maybe a CNV with uh, another uh, small uh, alteration here, which both of them can give rise to a phenotype which can explain uh, the phenotype of the patient. As you saw, it was very easily uh, filtered by applying just uh, the phenotype uh, of the patient. And uh, if we look now in uh, the symptoms, we can very easily 
C that we have for Asher syndrome here, five findings and the clinical validity that is provided by our Kaijin knowledge base, it seems to be definitive. The relatedness seems to be definitive between the uh, information we gave and uh, the gene. We see that there are different findings uh, from ClinVar. In this case, if someone clicks here, can get directly to the ClinVar page and get more information with the different submissions in ClinVar for this uh, type of mutation. Uh, let's go now to the variant details page. Here in the variant details page, someone can see the different details about this specific variant, the description. We see that this is a CNV uh, and deletion of section 6364. And uh, there is also a tab with uh, the assessment and the CNV criteria. You see that there are different uh, uh, criteria triggered, specific ACMG CNV uh, related criteria, which are automatically assessed. There are also different other details about the variant, the position, uh, but also uh, information and gene links, which can be very helpful for the user in order to further assess uh, the variant without the need to going back and forth. Uh, as you can see, there is also a section of laboratory observations and someone if has seen again, this variant is uh, very important to know that this is a variant that has been previously seen uh, in the lab. Of, uh, moreover, I would like to highlight here uh, the, this section, which speaks about previous assessment. Uh, we offer this possibility as well to our users. So if a variant has been previously seen and assessed in, in the lab, this is uh, this, uh, this notification here is shown to the user. So the user can very easily uh, spot this variant and uh, very easily uh, assess and report accordingly this variant. For CNVs, as I mentioned before, it's extremely important to mention the breadth, but also the accuracy of the information and evidences that we provide in Kajian Clinical Insights. Here, if we click in the bibliography, we can see that for this specific deletion, we have a huge amount of information. We have many references found and very specifically, someone can filter the different uh, evidences and uh, bibliographies available uh, regarding the clinical cases, if someone wants to just look in clinical cases or population studies, or uh, also to filter the, the publications that someone is investigating based on uh, specific CNV criteria, for example, uh, to give uh, some uh, specifications about the overlap of the CNV that is under investigation with known CNV events. Something which is very important as well is that we give context to every single uh, evidence and uh, uh, publication uh, regarding the CNV match. And we see here that there is a publication which has an exact match with 100% similarity score of this CNV. This is extremely important information when uh, assessing a variant and specifically a CNV because the user do not need to go back and forth in the literature and look for evidences. Everything is in front of your screen and you can very uh, quickly assess the variant. Uh, so someone now, if wants to uh, put this uh, variant into uh, a report, all has to do is to set to click here and set assessment. I will just type pathogenic, excuse me, pathogenic CNV, pathogenic CNV, just for our purposes here. And I click OK. And now we can see that this variant, if we go back to the variant list, this variant uh, has been uh, taken a character of a reportable variant, as you can see here. And uh, I can do the same for uh, this uh, variant here. And I can uh, look now again in the different uh, evidences for ACNG criteria this time, the different criteria that have been triggered. There are different details, variant details, the effect on the protein that is extremely useful. Many people are uh, very uh, interested to have this uh, view here and uh, see the different uh, mutations that ha have been uh, reported uh, on this uh, region and where the mutation of this sample lies in. There is also a section with reported clinical cases for this specific disease. 
and you can see with this monogram the different heterozygous or uh, homozygous or different uh, uh, cases for uh, this specific variant. Someone click here in counts and get the relevant uh, bibliography for this specific uh, mutation, which refers to uh, the different clinical cases of this uh, uh, variant. Moreover, there are uh, clinical cases reported from other laboratories. As you can see here, we have the AGMD uh, session number as well, which someone can click and get uh, all the details with the, relative, uh, the relevant literature. Uh, AGMD, which is extremely uh, useful and a gold standard offered uh, uh, with conjunction uh, with uh, QCI interpret uh, for uh, an accurate interpretation of uh, hereditary uh, and germline variants. So, moreover, there is a very uh, useful uh, tab uh, someone can look at, which is the different uh, frequencies in population. We can see that we have different uh, frequencies for different ethnic groups, from NOMAD, from ESP as well. And last, we have also the uh, functional impact from different uh, uh, resources and uh, and uh, prediction uh, tools such as CAD, Polyphen, Sift, Mutation Tester, or uh, Gene Splicer, Max and Scan, Philopy, etc. All of them are extremely useful information or the summon to uh, make sure that they are assessing properly the variant. So if we look now in the bibliography, we can uh, again uh, have uh, the same filtering uh, approach on, on the statements uh, of bibliographies. And uh, I would proceed to add these as well as assessed uh, as pathogenic and then someone if, if wants to go and report this you should click here on the third tab with the review and report and then you will uh, go on the report page that we are having here i'm sorry it takes a little bit of time so here we are uh, now here someone can assess uh, and add any comments. We see the evidences for pathogenicity. Everything is ready to go to report for both variants. You can add comments as well if you want an overall comment like uh, pathogenic, for example. And then you go to preview report. And here is uh, the report that someone can get, for example, for this case that we just solved. Uh, you can customize this report completely. Uh, the two variants are shown here, uh, the assessment, the different pathogenicity uh, criteria that have been triggered are available, and other information as well can be uh, shared uh, in, the, uh, in the interpretation report uh, as, uh, based on your needs, basically. So uh, now, uh, since we saw the first case, I will move to uh, the second case, which is uh, a case uh, which was a, a complex case. And uh, here I would like to show you again how easy someone can filter based on uh, the no Kaiju knowledge base and how all these data sets are uh, linked between each other and how someone can filter on phenotypes. So here we have a case of a girl which uh, has uh, a, a very severe case of uh, ichthyosis and uh, hypotrichosis. And you see that, uh, again, this, uh, uh, this uh, run is a run with uh, more than uh, 3 million variants. It's a whole genome run. And uh, uh, someone can look in different ways in this uh, case. Someone can look uh, and add uh, phenotype, uh, phenotypes here. Uh, and I think this is what will be wiser to do here since we want to minimize the list of variants. Um, so if we are adding here the different phenotypes like hypotrichosis, um, disorder of here, if you want, disorder of here, or um, abnormal morphology, abnormal morphology of here are some of the phenotypes uh, that have been reported for this uh, little girl. 
apotrichosis, uh, for example, it's or some can add like autosomal recessive because uh, it, it is expected uh, to be autosomal recessive. Uh, uh, hypotrichosis. Hypotrichosis here. So if we apply the symptoms now. So here, after adding these uh, phenotypes, now we can see that uh, we have ended up with just 84 uh, variants and someone can uh, sort now these variants based on different parameters. For example, I will close it for now. Uh, we can see first that we have uh, some uh, classified as pathogenic here or likely pathogenic and then most of them are uh, likely benign or uh, variants of unknown significance. And uh, we can see here that uh, we have some uh, phenotypes with the phenotype-driven ranking uh, approach. Um, someone can uh, sort them based uh, on different characteristics. Uh, here, the suspicion for this uh, girl is that it ha she has uh, uh, a disease which may be uh, recessive. And uh, so someone can look for homozygous or compounded heterozygous variants. So let's see if we click there, then uh, we will minimize even further this uh, list. And we can see that at the very top of, of this uh, screen, now we have two variants in a gene called SPINK5 uh, related to Nethertone syndrome. So if we click here now, let's see what's the clinical validity evidences we see that the clinical validity is definitely for this. We have uh, uh, four findings which uh, are related to the disorder of here and uh, more findings as well for the different uh, phenotypes that we gave. Someone if clicks here can get, uh, can get directly the evidences and uh, uh, publications from different sources, publications, but also from uh, uh, databases that provide uh, different phenotypes in information. And uh, we have all these uh, evidences in, in front of our hands to use it, but also to report if we want very easily these uh, variants. Someone can look also for homozygous uh, if, if need be. Here you see that there is uh, potentially some variants that can be interesting like the SCARF2, but uh, this is not related to, to the phenotype. So most probably is not related to, to the disease that we are investigating. Uh, and then we have the variant uh, details. Uh, if uh, we click uh, back, the compounds of heterozygous with variant details, someone can go in variant details and report again these two uh, SPINK5 uh, variants. Again, we have all the different criteria of ACMG that someone can adjust accordingly and then to set uh, properly the assessment. Uh, the variant details, the laboratory observations that we mentioned before, how many times has been seen before, uh, the effect on the protein, the monogram with uh, uh, the different uh, clinical cases reported uh, regarding homozygous cases, but also compounded heterozygous cases, but also the different uh, publications that are referring to these clinical cases, submissions in ClinVar, HGMD, uh, and other uh, sources, and last, uh, we have the, the different frequencies in the population and the predicted functional impact. So if someone wants now to create uh, a, a, a report for these two variants, can uh, very easily create the report as I showed before. We can see that this variant has been previously assessed as pathogenic, which is extremely important to create a faster interpretation. And here is the report for this uh, variant. Again, we see uh, these two variants that we have and uh, have been shown as uh, pathogen and like pathogen with all the different uh, evidences available and the criteria that have been treated for each one of these uh, variants. Again, by using the uh, phenotype driven ranking information in this uh, case, we were able here to, to solve it in a matter of two clicks, a whole genome case by adding just the phenotypes there this automatically pops up directly when someone clicked in the compounded heterozygous uh, or uh, 
uh, homozygous state if someone is looking for recessive diseases. So uh, this was another case. And now I will try to, to give you uh, an, a quick overview for the hereditary carrier screening uh, workflow, which is very similar to what uh, I showed you already, but also to a trio case analysis that, that we are having. Um, here for uh, the hereditary uh, workflow, I would like uh, basically for, for the carrier screening workflow, excuse me, I would like basically to show you uh, the, 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 the report that is very important. Uh, and the workflow is again the same as uh, the single sample analysis I showed you before. You have in your hands all the different uh, tools, CNV tools, the uh, thing type driven ranking that someone can add and adjust accordingly. You can filter based on the different uh, filters here, but also to sort your variants based on the novel sex link uh, or uh, heterozygous, of course, a state that you're looking for carrier screening here and to keep different uh, variants for your analysis such as pathogenic or likely pathogenic in order to report at the end. Then in the variant details tab, uh, here the information that uh, we provide in the carrier screening is the same. Uh, the, the breadth of information and uh, the, the content that we provide for expanded carrier screening uh, is uh, very, very big and uh, it covers uh, all the needs of uh, at least the existing uh, guidelines in different countries. So uh, even if some genes are not, let's say, under the uh, wider breadth of the fully curated content, we can do that for you. And uh, if we see uh, the, the carrier screening report, let's say that we have this um, uh, list here, excuse me, and someone wants to report uh, some variants uh, from here for the report, uh, uh, for reporting purposes. One of them may be the ATP7BG gene for Wilson disease, which is a serious disease. And we see that the problem here is a pterozygous uh, for this uh, recessive disease. So if someone uh, reports that with the way I showed you before. Uh, someone can get uh, this kind of report, which can be, of course, customized based on your needs uh, as an expanded carrier screening uh, uh, report uh, with all the information about, about the disease uh, and uh, the recessive uh, mode of inheritance. Uh, but also, we provide info uh, about statistic, uh, regarding the statistics of the disease and the mutation uh, itself. As you can see here, we have the, also the different evidences for pathogenicity and context, clinical context for the variant which is related to the specific uh, disease. And uh, last, we provide also some statistics in different ethnic groups regarding the carrier rate, but also a monogram which can help better understand the modes of inheritance in, in a such uh, autosomal recessive way from the patients. Uh, with uh, this, uh, here, I will uh, switch very quickly now to the tree analysis. As you can see here, we have again in the same uh, uh, platform, uh, uh, now a trio case analysis. And uh, uh, we have the three tabs, variant list, variant tells, review and report. The difference here is that we have another column, which is the controls. And in this case are the parents of this individual. This individual is a girl, a little girl uh, who has uh, who is affected by arrhythmias. Uh, she's affected by arrhythmias uh, and has some heart problems. And uh, as you can see here, I have already added this. And that's why we have very few variants uh, here. Uh, and if I click on here, I'm showing to you all the variants, not just the variant based on the phenotype driven ranking on arrhythmia. If I click on the phenotype driven ranking, I will get just 66 variants. Uh, and as you can see, there are these variants here that we are looking at. Uh, but since we are speaking about uh, uh, clinical uh, case of uh, familial variant analysis, someone would like, yes? Your audio got muffled there for a second, but it came back right as I said something. But it happened once before earlier for just a second, and I wanted to make sure that we were able to make sure that your audio wasn't getting muffled like that. So I'm not sure if uh, maybe your mic is being moved when you're clicking something, but uh, oh. there was a little instance where it sounded like it got a little bit muffled. 
All right, I'm sorry. All That's right. okay. All right, so let me go back. Okay. So I'm starting again from here. Perfect. Yes, thank you. So if we choose the phenotype driven ranking, we see that we have only 66 variants here. And uh, since we are uh, talking now about uh, uh, a clinical uh, case of uh, familiar variant analysis, someone uh, can sort, let's sort uh, this by the variant findings, for example. Uh, so we can see the findings here based on the evidences that we have in our platform. And uh, it will be very useful for someone to look in a familiar ca uh, case, to look uh, in the difference uh, in the different uh, segregation uh, of, uh, of the variant in the family, but also the mode of inheritance. So if we want, for example, to look here in uh, the compound heterozygous state, uh, then we will get a few variants which uh, can be easily uh, assessed. As you can see, the only pathogenic seems to be a gene related to familiar breast cancer, which is unrelated to this phenotype, of course. So then uh, we may be interesting to look in homozygous variants to see if there is something there. Again, there is not much here regarding pathogenic variants and also to, uh, be, to, uh, to agree with the segregation in the family. So by clicking on the de novos, we will be able to see then the de novo variants, which can explain potentially the phenotype. So we see that we have a variant here, which is related to uh, tumors, which of course may be unrelated to our phenotype. But uh, we see a couple of variants here, this one and that one, that are related to arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So these two variants may be uh, very two strong can candidates which can, can explain uh, the uh, pathogenicity for this phenotype of the girl. So if we click again in the details and we see the bibliography of this variant, we see here again the ACNG criteria, for the bibliography, we have all the relevant context which can be filtered and keep only the clinical cases or so only the variant specific references only. And we see that all of those are uh, related to this specific variant. We can see details like exactly where is mentioned in the, in the paper. And all of these information extremely useful and can be added, of course, to the report. Uh, with this, uh, I'm, I'm sure we are all kind uh, of understand how useful is the Kaijan knowledge base and the content that we provide there uh, with the different parameters uh, that are available for the filtering of a whole genome or whole exome run in order to someone uh, very easily end up and identify the causative variant of a disease in uh, just a matter of a few clicks rather than having to go back and forth in different databases and literature. All the evidences are curated by Kyogen for you uh, and is powered by a team of 200 PhD scientists that every day are manually curating uh, new evidences from the literature and different databases. Of course, this is powered as well by the augmented molecular intelligence uh, approach that we are uh, implementing in our uh, curating efforts. With this, I will uh, close uh, here the uh, presentation for uh, the demonstration of the platform, and I will switch to a summary slide in order to conclude our presentation today. So let's summarize our uh, today's presentation. As I mentioned, QCI Interpret provides a scalable, standardized, streamlined NGS interpretation and reporting workflow. It can help you interpret all types of genetic variation, including synvis, with the most up-to-date integrated evidences curated by Kaijen Knowledge Base. No need for you to spend time on finding evidences which can support your interpretation. All the evidences are there for you already pre-curated from our scientists. So this saves a tremendous amount of time from your interpretation workflow, which means that you can have a shorter turnaround time for your patient, but also to assess more cases daily in your lab. Moreover, Kajen Interpret provides a very efficient variant filtering, but also a powerful phenotype-driven ranking approach where someone can use and in a few clicks, just identify the variant of interest 
in order to solve complex cases which may have also high generic heterogeneity. We also provide trias on action level CNVs uh, with UCI interpret automated uh, ACMG CNV classification with full CNV literature support. This is extremely important because again, you don't need to look for these evidences. The evidences are ready for you in front of your screen. You, someone can use QCI interpret, first of all, uh, for any uh, test, if this is single sample analysis or if it's familial variant analysis, but also on, an, on a very agnostic way, independent of uh, which sequencer is used or which secondary analysis platform has been used in order to create the VCF file, which can be taken as an input from QCI interpret. Of course, the report is customized based on your needs and your lab needs. And uh, all of the above uh, can summarize and can reassure you that you can have at the end a proper uh, scalable standardized streamlined interpretation workflow, which will ultimately help you to reduce your interpretation time which result, of course, in reduced turnaround time, as I have mentioned many times during this webinar. With this, I would like to thank you very, very much for your approach, for, for your uh, attendance. And uh, uh, I would like also to uh, express uh, uh, many thanks to uh, uh, Kylie for uh, the introduction and uh, the organizing of uh, the webinar. And with this, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Dr. Simulis, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. All right, let's get started. Our first question is, can someone gain access to the content of Kyogen Knowledge Base for more informed interpretations by integrating this useful evidence in an existing interpretation lab workflow? Yeah, thank you very much for, for the question. Uh, that's a very good question. As I mentioned before, of course, um, different uh, users have different needs and different labs have, of course, different needs. Uh, the, the way that I presented the, these clinical cases today was through our UI, user-friendly UI uh, interface. Uh, but of course, access to this uh, extremely valuable uh, knowledge base, which can help you for your interpretation, is, uh, is possible through APIs as well. Uh, you can uh, call uh, through API all this uh, very useful content use it and integrate it in your interpretation workflow. And of course, uh, report accordingly uh, the variants that you want uh, based on all these evidences that are ready uh, curated for you. So the answer is yes, uh, someone can have access on that apart from the UI through API as well. Great, thank you. Another question we have here asks, how accurate is the curated data and evidence provided in the Kyogen knowledge base compared to AI methods? All right, uh, yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, it is true that uh, more and more we are uh, hearing about uh, AI. AI is a very um, uh, attractive uh, ter terminology nowadays. Um, the, the content of uh, Kyogen Something that uh, we should make sure uh, it's clear is that uh, it not only ensures the breadth of, uh, of information as uh, an AI content may do, but on top of that, it ensures uh, the quality and the accuracy of, uh, of this content. The content of Kaijin knowledge base is powered by artificial uh, augmented molecular intelligence uh, approach, which is uh, then also uh, meticulously uh, curated human, uh, by humans, by PhD scientists, in order to make sure that this huge amount of information is very accurate without any information that may be irrelevant to the user. So uh, 
the, the content of uh, Kaijin knowledge base uh, if someone wants to uh, compare it with uh, an AI just approach. What I could uh, definitely uh, say is that uh, it has not only the breadth of, uh, of uh, the AI, but uh, it also has a higher accuracy since, it, since uh, the content is on top of everything else manually curated, and that saves a tremendous amount of time for the user. I hope this answers uh, your question. Great, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question here. And this last one asks, how up to date is the content of QCI Interpret? Mm -hmm. That's a very good uh, question. Um, we are updating uh, the content, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, daily in different aspects. Uh, this is, uh, uh, the content is manually curated every day for new evidences by our uh, scientists. And, uh, uh by, by augmented processing basically from the clinical literature supported by hundreds of curators which uh, can ensure the completeness and quality uh, updated uh, as well on generally weekly frequency on the product side to ensure that variants uh, are interpreted uh, in the context of the most uh, current gene, gene disease uh, clinical evidences and uh someone who will be working with UCI Interpret, one of the things that uh, we'll never have to worry about is uh, uh, the update of the content because uh, this is one of uh, the most important things that characterize the Kaijin knowledge base uh, content. Well, thank you again, Dr. Stamoulis, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Kyogen, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Goodbye.